Hello everybody and welcome to today's top 5 board gaming video about dungeon crawlers. Before I get started, if you haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all of those you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really cool ways. Moving right into it, what is a dungeon crawler? For those of you who aren't familiar, a dungeon crawl game is where you are essentially going into a dungeon and just moving around. You're just exploring it, you're trying to find treasure, you're finding bad guys, you're on some sort of quest, something along those lines. Essentially you've got a big dark open space and you are just exploring it and seeing what's out there. So that's the style of game that I'm talking about right now. There are a decent number of these and they have a lot of different aspects around them um, and I'm really excited to see what you guys have to say as always. So please let me know what your favorite dungeon crawlers are in the comments below as I get started with mine. We're going to go ahead with my number five right now. At number five, I've got Munchkin Quest. Now this might come as a surprise to some of you who know how much I really don't like Munchkin anymore, but the fact is that the Quest board game is actually a pretty solid dungeon crawler. The idea behind it is that you've got the great humor of the original Munchkin game combined with a pretty solid dungeon crawler mechanic. Each of the individual rooms has a unique sort of shtick to it that will affect how you can move or do or whatever it happens to be. You've got all the various monsters and of course the classic munchkin classes, races, etc, etc. The problem where this breaks down and why it's so low on this list is the fact that you still have the munchkin issue of either being really really good or really really bad and essentially it's best to be in second place because everybody stops the first place guy and then the second place wins because nobody has anything left to stop you. But even so, it's a fun dungeon crawler. It does have some great humor in it. I recommend at least giving it a try if you can. Munchkin Quest, my number five. At number four, I've got Mice and Mystics. Now this might seem like a little bit of an odd one because it's not inherently a dungeon crawler, but it is still very much a wonderful exploration game, and I see it as you're going into a dungeon. There's a lot of different games like this, such as Zombicide Level 7, etc., etc., all of these types of things where you've got the big board that you're going out and exploring. I personally really enjoy the story behind Mice and Mystics, though, and that's why I wanted to put it on this list. Like I mentioned with my number five, is that it makes me feel like I'm playing a D&D campaign where I've got a really solid story, a really good narrative that I end up following. The mechanics for this game famously quite good, the story itself is really nice, the artwork is very well done, and it's just a fun adventuring game where you're going in exploring the unknown and not fully understanding what you might end up seeing. Mice and Mystics, my number four. At number three, I've got Vast Crystal Caverns. This is a wonderful example of an asymmetric game where every player is playing as a very unique character that has their own individual goals. In addition, the whole point is that everybody is exploring the same um, area simultaneously, and that area is a dungeon, the Crystal Caverns themselves. So what I really love about this game that puts it over the others I've talked about so far is the idea of that heavily asymmetric gameplay where everybody has their own thing but at the same time we're all moving around the same area. That said, it can be kind of frustrating if people don't prepare themselves to play it because again, having to learn how to play several different unique roles and end up explaining every single one can be kind of frustrating during game setup but once everybody's used to it, it goes a lot faster, it's a ton of fun and has wonderful replayability. Vast Crystal Caverns is my number three. At number two, I've got the Mac Daddy Gloomhaven. That's right, this big, giant, scary game where you have a huge campaign and you're exploring all sorts of different stuff and doing all sorts of different things, finding all of the loot, getting all of the great equipment, and do I really need to say anything else? Several times during this video I've talked about the similarity to the tabletop RPG Dungeons and & Dragons, and you can say it for pretty much any fantasy tabletop RPG, Gloomhaven really gives you that feeling. That said, it's only number two on this list because it's virtually impossible to get. It's so expensive, it's so ludicrous, it's really tough to get a group together for it, but at the same time, if you are able to, it is an incredible gaming experience. Gloomhaven, my number two. At number one, I've got Descent, and honestly, the only reason that this beat out Gloomhaven is simply because it's more affordable and it's reasonable to get. You still have that same idea of the ongoing campaign, the D&D style gameplay, and that same sort of feeling you get 
from a tabletop RPG. It's a wonderful, wonderful idea. It's a great game to play. Again, like Gloomhaven, it's difficult to get a group together. It's not that easy, but if you're talking very classic dungeon crawl style game, this is really where you want to be. You're going room to room, door through door, and you're finding the monsters, killing them, getting the treasure, backing up your, um, backing up your friends, making sure that you all have enough of your skills, your HP, all of that kind of stuff, and just really making certain that you are all on top of your game so that you can eventually win the entire campaign. Descent, my number one dungeon crawler game. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite dungeon crawler games. Like I mentioned, this is a little bit open to interpretation in terms of what constitutes a dungeon and crawling through it and do you have, are you okay being able to see the map or are you not? And there's a little bit of wiggle room in terms of that, so I'm really curious what you guys have to say. What do you consider a dungeon crawler? And most importantly, what are your personal favorites? Please let me know anything and everything you think in the comments below. You guys know I love to hear from you. But that said, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.